So for the last several months, I've been working with this company called Hestis to test out their new AI powered sketch assistant in Fusion that's 100% free for all Fusion users. The company was founded by Sarab and his colleague Kevin, both with deep technical backgrounds in aerospace applications such as Space Ride, where Sarab was the founder and CEO until the company was sold in 2023, along with Cruise Automation, where Sarab initially got connected to Kevin, who led the autonomous vehicle engineering teams. Now, the tool that they are working on is an AI Copilot that gives you tons of helpful suggestions to help boost your creative workflow and streamline the process from getting a back of the napkin idea into a polished 3D design much faster. But the team needs our feedback. So let's back up for a second. Why AI powered sketch tools of all things? When talking with Sarab, it was so evident that the entire industry has the same struggle, getting the foundation of a model into a polished design quickly. But all CAD software is not the most intuitive right out of the box. Every beginner knows that there are soft and hard rules that you must follow to make sure that you're incorporating good design intent into your part. But what is design intent? Good design intent goes way beyond just tossing a model together and getting your sketches to work and getting everything into a steady state and then calling that a finished product. Setting up a model correctly is so important to be able to incorporate downstream changes and other things that may occur over a product's life cycle, no matter how big or small. And that almost always comes back to how you define your features that come back to your sketches, so how do we fix that, especially as like a beginner designer and maybe even intermediate? That's where the sketch helper comes in to start assisting the driver of the software. Things like constraints, symmetry, construction lines, dimensioning scheme, all of these feed into making smarter parts, but more importantly, make your design workflow way more seamless. So today I'm gonna to take you step by step on how to download the extension, start using it inside of Fusion, how to report any issues that you have or make recommendations, and then showcase some of the features that I've been using a ton over the last couple of months and some of the stuff that you can hopefully incorporate into your workflow to streamline a lot of the processes and maybe even get better suggestions on how you make your parts. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is install the extension. That way you're able to use it when you're inside of Fusion and it's super easy. There's two ways to do it, but the first way I'm going to show you is probably the easiest. Go ahead and navigate over to the Hestis website, which is just hestis.co. I'm also going to have that link down in the description. And then once you're on the homepage, just come up here to the top right and go to try it for free. You'll select which operating system you actually run your software on, click it, and then it'll immediately start the download for you in your downloads folder. Once that's done, you'll just go to your downloads folder and you'll double click on the package installer or whatever kind of installer you got downloaded from their website. And then you'll click through the dialog to make sure you're accepting the terms and installing it in the right location. And it's as simple as that. Go ahead and close out of the installer and you're ready to pop open Fusion. Now, the next time you open Fusion, you should have this nice little icon up here in the top of your toolbar, and you're ready to go with starting your sketch. Now, the other way that you can actually get this extension installed is through the Fusion App Store itself by going to Utilities, Add-ins dropdown, clicking on Fusion App Store, and then in here, just search Hestis, and you'll get the Hestis Sketch Helper, which you can select. And then the only thing here to make sure of is having the proper operating system that you use selected, whether that's Windows or Mac, and then once you have that selected, you just come up here, hit download, and then it'll immediately start that download for you. Now, sometimes if you haven't logged into the app store for a while, it'll ask for you to log in again, which is just the same username and password that you always use to log into the software itself. So plug that in, it'll plop you back on this page, and then you can go ahead and make sure to select download and get started on getting that incorporated. And then rinse and repeat, just make sure you close out a fusion, open it back up, and you should have the proper icon in your toolbar here. Now, just like with all my other parts, I'm gonna save this. That way I have an open project that's ready to go. So I come up and click save and you can put it in whatever project location you want to. I'll call this demo Hestis and we'll create our first component. Now we're ready to go ahead and jump into our sketch. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create sketch, pick my XY plane. If this doesn't already pop up the Hestis suggestions box, you can simply do that by clicking the drop down under Hestis and clicking on sketch helper. You can also just use your hotkey S and then start typing sketch and sketch helper will pop up right away. Now to do a really simple demo, I'm just gonna select the line tool and I'm gonna drag and drop a couple random points out here, kind of like so. 
hit escape, and right away you'll notice that I start getting these red faint lines that are giving me suggestions from Hestus. So to quickly go over what's inside of the suggestion toolbox here, we have a green check mark where you can accept a suggestion or you can simply hit the enter key while you're working inside of the suggestion box. You can also hit the escape key to reject a suggestion. You can use the comma hot key to go back on different suggestions and the period key to go forth on suggestions, which I'll demo that now using the period key and using the comma key. They also just incorporated this new bug icon, which is their feedback form. So if you're working in the tool and you run into an issue, you can immediately click that little icon and send them feedback and kind of describe what kind of issue you're having and give them a description of how they can recreate it on their end. That way they can flow that into the next release to make sure that that's addressed. And then the last thing that I really love, this is probably my favorite feature, which is so simple, is this little lock icon. Normally when we're defining our parts, you know that your sketch isn't properly defined if you haven't locked it all the way out. And you can always verify that by coming to whatever part you're working in, dropping down your sketches. And if you see a little pencil icon next to the rectangle, that means that your sketch is not fully defined. Therefore, it's not properly constrained. What's so cool about this lock icon is that I can actually click on it and it'll show little highlighted red sections over all of the points that are not constrained right now, which is super helpful because there's a lot of times, even when all of your lines will turn white, that make you think your part is fully defined, but it's actually not. And this is a quick and easy way to sanity check your part to make sure that you have your definition incorporated. So I'm actually gonna click on the tool, hit the period key and start cycling through some of these suggestions. The first one that pops up is this dangling points recommendation. It knows that I have a free floating point here and a free floating point here, which would cause me a ton of issues if I don't get those constrained somehow. And because I actually want those two points connected, I'm gonna hit enter. And now those two are constrained together. The next thing that pops up are these HV constraints, which stands for your horizontal vertical constraints that we normally use up here in this toolbar. This is also super helpful to make sure that you're getting your part oriented relative to the origin to make sure that you're defining it appropriately, which is another thing that I do want for this tool. The last thing that's popping up is dimensioning. As you know, we always have to have some form of dimension scheme to make sure we're sizing our part appropriately. It doesn't matter what it is, but it does need to be defined. And that's another suggestion I really do want for this part. The last thing that we have to do is actually constrain the part relative to the origin. I could dimension that out, but I'm actually just gonna use my coincident constraint, select this bottom corner, select the origin. I hit escape and we are fully defined on our part. And I can verify that now with the red lock icon showing up in the suggestion box, which just to close the loop on this, I can also drop down and see that my sketch is fully locked out, meaning the two are in sync on what I have for my full definition. So I went ahead and deleted the sketch we just made, and I'm going to start with another real world example, which will be just a simple four hole bracket. And we can see some more suggestions that'll pop up when we're doing that. I'll start a two point rectangle, drag and drop it on the plane, escape out. Right away, I'm starting to get some more suggestions. So I'll hit period to scale through them. And this is one of my favorite things that gets suggested are the center lines. You can get these for circles, but rectangles, if you know a lot of the videos that I've done on this channel, I use construction lines all the time to make a nice reference for rectangles and squares and anything that has really simple geometry like this. So I'm gonna take that suggestion. And what's nice too, is that I can constrain that to my origin right away. Now I'll escape out of my coincident constraint. It's also giving me the option for dimensions. I do want dimensions as well. I'm gonna set this to 75 and I'll go ahead and make this 50. That's perfect. And I wanna go ahead and start populating my holes. So with my circle tool, drop it down. Circle dimensions gets recommended. Yes, I want that. And I'm gonna change that to 10. And then here's something really cool. Right now I have these construction lines going across the vertical and horizontal midpoints on both of these lines, but something neat happens if you change those to a center line for your line type over here in the sketch palette. I'm going to change that. I'm also going to change this horizontal line to a center line. And you'll notice it shows up a quad mirror. So this is really helpful if you know you're going to be exploiting symmetry across two different planes. The tool actually recognizes that and is willing to populate those for you. So I'm going to take that suggestion and then I'm going to start my dimensioning tool. I'm going to make this one 46. And I'm gonna make this one 26. And just like that, in no time, I've got a fully defined part. You can double check your red lock icon right here telling me that I'm fully defined. It's still willing to give me some extended symmetry and offering to populate some center lines if that's a suggestion I wanna take and then run with. But for now, this is a perfectly good part and I'm actually happy with where it's at. So I can extrude it. 
we'll call it five and done deal. Just like that in no time, I'm able to populate a nice symmetric four point bracket that's easy to use, reduce a lot of the clicks. As you could tell, I could just fly right through that and he was able to intuitively notice that I was starting to pick up some symmetry along the way to make this part faster, cleaner and built in with some constraints right out the gate. Now, just to experiment here with any efficiency I can get from using the sketch helper, I modeled the same part we just did with the sketch helper turned on for the left part and the normal way I would define the same bracket off on the right part. I was surprised to see that even with something as simple as this, I was able to shave off just about 30 seconds without putting too much thought into how to incorporate the Hesta suggestions as they popped up. And I didn't really account for the fact that I was pretty confident what my sketch setup was going to be when trying my normal way without the helper on the right. So even though this was a fun little test, the engineer in me loved seeing some form of a performance indicator when running the tool against my standard workflow when I'm sketching, just to see how much of an improvement Improvement I can make. But it doesn't stop there. I'm actually going to do another example where I can kind of showcase some other suggestions that can pop up just to give you a different kind of example for a less regular part, but something that may be custom that you're wanting to work on that can still use some different suggestions. So first thing I'm going to do, activate my top level. I'm going to start a new component. We'll just call this part two, and I'm going to mute out my first part that I just made. Now we'll just go ahead and start a sketch. I'm going to use the same plane and right away my suggestion box pops up, which means sketch helper is ready to go. I'm going to activate my line tool and just start dropping some points on the page here. So we'll come up here, hold down the left mouse button to make an arc Come over here, hold it down to make another arc Come down here, hold it down, make one more arc. And I'm actually just gonna call it good right there. So once again, I can tell that I have some dangling points and yes, I do wanna get those connected. It's also noticing that I have these different arcs here and it's giving me the option to make them all equal, which I do in fact want. Now this is really cool. This is kind of hard to see, but it's noticing that I made a part that is pretty close to being symmetric. So it's giving me this option to bake in some symmetry and tidy up these parts a little bit to make it more of a uniform part, which is something that I do want because I want to get to a point where where I have two holes up here and a bottom mounting hole down here. So I'm actually gonna accept that suggestion as well. Cycling through this, I'll see what other options I have right now and its dimensions and an HV constraint. I'm actually gonna tidy this up real quick just to make it closer to my final form part. So I'm gonna make a coincident constraint with this point and the origin. And you know, the center line is fine where it is, but I actually wanna tidy up where those two are located so I don't have to define this later. I'm gonna attach the end of the center line here to this top line and then the bottom of that center line to the arc. And if I escape out, I can just kind of drag these parts out a little bit to kind of see a little bit more of my final form part here. This recommendation is giving me is my arc dimensions. I do want to enable that because I need to define that at a radius of 20. So let's go ahead and pop that in. Okay, size my part accordingly. Now I also want to start populating my circles and what will eventually be my whole cutouts too. So I'm gonna hit C for circle drag and drop one in there, escape out, and it gives me the option to dimension that, which I do want. So let's go ahead and define that at 20. That's perfect. Now let's look at my suggestions here. We've got dimensions, center lines. Oh, this is exactly what I want right here. It's picking up that I have a center line that I can repurpose for another mirror. And that is exactly what I would like to do. So I'm gonna hit enter, accept that. Now to kind of finish this up, I'm gonna throw in some dimensions here. Use my dimension tool. We'll make that 55. Then I'm gonna dimension from here to here. We'll make that 80. Now to kind of round this all off, I'm gonna throw in my last circle here at the bottom using my circle hotkey, drag and drop escape out. So it's giving me the option to dimension that new circle, which I do want to do. And you know what, I'm going to also make that 120. If I wanted to, though, I could back out of that and just use my equal constraint to make this the same as the other two. And boom, just like that, we have fully defined our part, we can double check our red lock icon right away and tell that this part is 100% ready to go as well. So finally, I'll just extrude this, we'll also make this five. And just like that, we've got a really nice little three point bracket here. Really fun tool. I've been using this for a couple months now, but I think this is at the point 
where it would be really helpful to get some recommendations from other people. What are some real world parts that you're trying to build, where this can come in and be helpful? What are some issues that you've had? Please drop that down in the comments below, or please feel free to reach out to Sarab and his team to start making some recommendations so that this tool can get improved for everybody. Sarab and his team are looking for any and all feedback to help improve the tool, whether that's looking for features that you want added that will actually help you with your design workflow or polishing up some of the stuff that's already incorporated in there and giving them feedback on things that work or things that could get better. The easiest thing that you can do is actually use that bug reporting tool when you're using the sketch software, write down some thoughts on things that are working or not working or improvements that need to be made and shoot it right to them so that they can work on incorporating those changes. Or if you'd like an open dialogue with them, please go to their contact page. I'll have the website link below in the description and I'll float it here on the screen so you can reach out with improvements or ideas that you have that can help make your life easier. As always, thank you so much for tuning into this episode and thank you even more to Sarab and his team for sponsoring this video. I love seeing tools like this that help other beginners that are getting through their early stages of using CAD and giving them a tool that is going to help boost your productivity and reduce a lot of the clicking and the mundane tasks that come along with being able to design your own things. So I'll catch you all next time. Good luck with your designing and thank you so much for watching.